China's record flooding season has raised concerns about the country's dams, most of which have not been reinforced in a long, long time. Thousands of dams built during Mao Zedong's agrarian push in the 1950s and 60s are now on the brink of collapse. Take the Yangshuo Dam, for example, which collapsed on the 7th of June after heavy rainfall. The collapse led to the inundation of settlements and agricultural fields. The dam was built in the year 1965 and was lost, reinforced 25 years ago. A spate of strong rainfall led to overflowing, followed by a collapse. Chinese media was largely mum on the whole incident, but the issue could potentially be devastating for China. There are close to 94,000 aging dams in China. All of these dams are vulnerable due to the record rains that China has been receiving at the moment. The Deputy Minister for Water Resources in China said that flood control measures in the country are fully capable of controlling any scenario. But he did concede that China's dams are at the risk of overflowing. He alluded to a black swan event, an event that is unpredictable and beyond what is normally expected. But the question is, does forceful neglecting of decades-old dam systems constitute a natural and unpredictable event? In response, China is frantically trying to reinforce dams and build new ones. Many of China's dams were built over settlements that were sparsely populated at the time of construction. But since then, these settlements have grown into sprawling townships. So a dam collapse could result in massive loss of life and property in some cases. Questions also need to be asked about the quality of these dams in terms of design and construction. Experts say that dams should be able to withstand catastrophes even without regular reinforcements. This possibly suggests a design flaw or hurried construction. In 1975, China witnessed its worst dam catastrophe. The Banquillo Dam in the Yellow River collapsed, killing tens of thousands of people. The dam collapsed within just 23 years of construction. This is highly unusual for dams anywhere in the world. The next big worry for China is the dam at King Shitan. Its riverbeds have been shored up since last month and there is speculation of a repeat of what happened in Yangshou. Environmental experts say that China does not need more dams. It needs to extend wetlands and floodplains to absorb the floodwaters. Our correspondent Patrick Falk now joins us live from Beijing for more on that story. Patrick, uh, talk to us. Uh, even as the flood water levels keep rising and the emergency response to floods, the levels of those uh, are at their peak right now. China is forced to think about its dams which are degenerating. Yeah, well, it's kind of inevitable because there are thousands of these aging dams that you talk about right across the country. As you say, many of them built in the 1950s and 60s when China was predominantly an agrarian society. And these dams were built to fend off drought. But it seems as though a lot of them aren't going to stand the test of time or indeed extreme weather conditions that we're experiencing right now. That dam that you talked about in Guangxi province, a Reuters report is saying that it was around 100 meters long. They went to visit it last month and it had completely disappeared. Eyewitnesses said the flooding was something that they'd never seen before. Just to give you an idea of what sort of flooding we're talking about, this dam was designed to carry enough water to fill more than 70 full-size swimming pools. So you can imagine the rush of water and flooding that it caused to the village uh, nearby, which was apparently completely uh, inundated. This is a big concern for authorities in China. As you say, there's a potential for a black swan event, something that China really doesn't need right now after everything that's been through with the coronavirus pandemic. But there are, as far as reports tell us, as many as 94,000 of these uh, aging dams. There are concerns about the techniques uh, used to build them. Of course, they were built decades ago. Some of them have been reinforced since, but you know, this dam in Guangxi, for instance, was built with compacted earth. So you can understand why you know, some of the techniques used to build these facilities and, and dams and so on and so forth uh, may just not be good enough. And given the 
scale, the amount of dams that we're talking about, even though authorities are reinforcing uh, as much as they can right now, you question how much they're going to be able to do, given the extreme situation, the extreme weather conditions that China is suffering right now. Patrick Falk reporting live from Beijing. Uh, Patrick, before we let you go, talk to us about the current situation of the, of the flooding uh, across China. It is the worst in over three decades is what we understand at this point in time. Yeah, that's right. And there's a lot of talk about the connection with climate change in particular. Now, experts say that you can't pinpoint any extreme weather event like this to climate change. But if you look over the course of time, you know, there has been a steady increase in, in rainfall uh, since the 1960s. In fact, one expert said that there's been an average of about a 4% increase in rainfall every decade since the 1960s. And in particular, for, since the 1990s, uh, there have been a lot more annual cases of extreme uh, rainfall as we've been experiencing this year in China. But there's also a certain amount of um, human behavior involved. We're told that land reclamation is contributing to flooding as well. In some cases, illegal land reclamation. So that's something that authorities will have to contend with. Thank you, Patrick, for being with us. Patrick Falk uh, bringing us that live ground report straight from Beijing. Now, a vaccine developed by private Chinese pharmaceutical company